Okay, Noble Phoenix has a serious question for you. Mm. Adam, if you are going with McAfee for VP, can you critique him? I love his stances of freedom, but the guy as an individual seems a bit scammy, uh, debaucherous, egotistical, and greedy. Hold on, let me, I'm going to write, I'm going to, let me, yeah, well, you pass me that. I want, I want to get all of those. Uh, scammy, debaucherous, egotistical, and greedy. I'm gonna I'm gonna address each of those in order. But uh, just one one technical note: we are gonna switch mics here uh, uh, as, as, until we get back to comments. We get back to comments. We'll uh, we'll get back to the good studio mic here. But hopefully everybody can still hear me, Lima, Charlie, and this thing should be charging. There we go. Can you hear me? Now? All right. Yeah, so Jim's just going to be quiet on our on our other microphone here. Thank you for bearing with us as we uh, develop this production, of course. So the comment from Noble Phoenix, Adam, if you are going with McAfee for VP, can you critique him? I love his stances of freedom, but the guy as an individual seems a bit scammy, debaucherous, egotistical, and greedy. So uh, I'm going to give a, a complete fair assessment here, uh, as I think is worthwhile, as, as, as I've yet to fully do on the record, you know, playing both sides for, for Mr. McAfee and, and addressing the legitimate critiques with him. Um, first of all, I think John McAfee represents a great compliment to my, my one weakness, and that's lack of executive experience. And it's funny, this was asked during the debate last night for all the candidates, what's your executive experience? And I was like, ah, shit, this is my weakness. And then I heard all the, the other candidates was like, uh, Hmm. Actually, I think I measure up here. You know, I mean, uh, the the uh, just having been a sergeant in combat, being able to lead troops under fire, and having run a, you know a number of successful small businesses, of course, most notably Adam versus the Man, which at one time had uh, a staff of four full time, uh, volunteer staff uh, of a, a much bigger than that, of course, and boosters when we were fully organized with a three hour production years ago. And, you know, that got us up to 80 million views on YouTube. I'd say it's a very successful small business. Uh, and as an organizer, especially in terms of executive experience around projects in more challenging situations, organizing protests and rallies, some in the anti-war movement days with IVAW and the tens of thousands, even by myself without the anti-war movement behind me, just, well, I shouldn't say by myself. We had a great team, but I was, certainly was the executive and leading the effort of the Ron Paul is the choice of the troops march in 2012 with 500 veterans marching in formation on the White House. Really epic experience. But I don't have John McAfee level, major corporate, undeniable household name kind of brand McAfee antivirus experience. And that is something where I go, yeah, and if he's endorsing my platform and he's going to help me carry out the bankruptcy, I feel much better about going into this knowing that I have people like him backing me up who see that america would be better off without the federal government who see that this bankruptcy process is worth pursuing who see that they can help and make sure that this is a peaceful orderly responsible process the other thing is that the, the the mainstream media reach like i think this is like one of my greatest weaknesses as a candidate as well right where like i yeah and then last night in the debate i go the like because in politics i get referred to as a nobody i'm i'm a nobody honestly in in Mainstream American politics, I'm a nobody. I'm a footnote. In libertarian politics, I'm a big name. In the general public, I have pretty good name ID. But in political sense, yeah, I'm a nobody. And I have you know, 50,000 followers on Twitter, quarter million subs on YouTube, you know, 80 million views, all these impressions, yada, yada, yada. And I go, man, this is my weakness. And I would, I, when I announced two years ago, I was hoping that there'd be more people at John McAfee's level jumping into the race. And yet, last night in the debate, you know, Vermin Supreme is the only one who even holds a candle to my social media presence. And if you add it all up, this is not even significant uh, up to mine. He's, he, we're, we're matched on Twitter. But if you look at YouTube and views and, and, and Facebook and, and, and everything else, you know, there's some place. And I, who knows? He might, he might have outpaced me with his TikTok following. But again, his following, and, and I would, I grant Vermin, please don't take this the wrong way. I totally grant you that you have a, at the same level as me, but you're not at McAfee's level. You're not at Justin Amash's level. And to be even at my level, Vermin got to this point, not by talking about libertarian ideas, but just by punking the system and being Vermin Supreme, which is great, totally righteous. 
my following has been built on waking people up. And so John McAfee has this bigger presence that's built on his corporate experience, built on his name ID, built on all the stuff that he's done with crypto and MGT management, everything that he's done in, in recent years in uh, you know s- digital security, uh, all, all these kinds of things. There's a reason he has over a million followers on Twitter. You know, it blows all of us out of the water. Because like I looked, looked around at the other contenders here, you know, it, it, Judge Jim Gray, Dr. Joe Jorgensen, and Jacob Hornberger Esquire. Uh, easily, I can say this off the top of my head. I have more social media following than all three of them combined. Like, by far. And then McAfee and Amash are on a scale higher. Like, we should, as a Libertarian Party, be expecting that whoever we nominate be starting with a base that is showing that they have a message that works. And so while I consider this a weakness of mine against the rest of the field, it's a strength. And with John McAfee next to the rest of us, he is at a whole other level of strength, of name ID and social media presence and ability to get mainstream media attention. So to have him as a compliment in in my platform in my race and as my vp nominee would be amazing i would also love my 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 next choice and this would be a toss-up for me i I would leave it to the delegates i think uh amash has some strengths that are really undeniable that would make him uh, an obvious first choice in a lot of ways but kokesh amash would be a jew and an arab teaming up against two 70 year old white dudes to take down the duopoly for freedom i think there's a lot of appeal to that as well but, uh, you know, Amash doesn't have McAfee strengths in the general presence and in the corporate experience. But so can I critique him to play devil's advocate against McAfee? He seems a bit scammy. Now, this is a, a critique that I think comes out of uh, two things. One, his tendency to exaggerate and to use misdirection in his messaging. And in that, I see a deliberate legal effort with a lot of what he's doing in order to call attention to his persecution by the IRS for tax evasion. And the way that he's doing this is actually really beautiful activism and very righteous in calling attention to the fact that taxation is theft, that the IRS is a criminal organization, that the federal government is a criminal organization. So the second, so I can't say, you know, in that uh, eh, a stylistic thing, maybe and whatever. Um, now, the other thing is from, his engagement with uh, cryptocurrencies and lesser known cryptocurrencies that leads him to being accused often of, of doing pump and dumps or, or, or just helping blow up coins or you know, using his social media following to promote coins not based on their uh, you know, economic advantages relative to Bitcoin or other existing dominant cryptos, but based on him having been paid to do these promotions. And if it's, hey, guess what? John McAfee makes money in the crypto space promoting altcoins that maybe you don't like, that, that might not be economically viable, but he's promoting people voluntarily buying into alternative currencies. Hey, more power to him. Now, if there are specific things that people want to tease out, well, he did this, this was scamming this. Okay, well, whatever. Um, I, is, is he, I, am, I, am I endorsing him because he has this, you know, saintly adherence to some you know, principle of of journalistic integrity and business practices and all that is he's mixing, you know, uh, talking about crypto and politics and his own legal situation, you know, eh, stylistic thing. Is it it a weakness? Yeah, yeah, he's not the friggin' Pope, okay? Uh, But yeah, he's he's definitely got a, a, I, I will acknowledge this in my critique of him, that he sets himself up for, for being accused of, of being scammed. Okay. Now, debaucheria. Now, this is, I think, misspelled in the comment from Noble Phoenix. Debaucherious. Yeah. I actually like that word. Debaucherious, I think, is with two R's. I, but debaucherous, I think, is the, is the word you're looking for, sir. Um, debaucherous. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, there there is, there is a critique here. I, I will grant you in sharing this idea of the libertarian macho flash, <clears throat> right? You, 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 this was an idea that, that more came up in the, the 90s and, and early 2000s. And as, as, a, as a young libertarian, I, I remember being warned against the macho flash messaging and the macho flash. And it's sort of like, you know, uh, you know like a flasher under a uh, trench coat, right? Look at me. I'm so libertarian. I think all drugs should be legal. I'm so libertarian. I think we should get rid of 
all the welfare. I'm so libertarian. We should get rid of the military entirely. I'm so libertarian. I'm an anarchist. You know, and the, you know, the, oh, okay. Um, and, and and if you come from that place of insecurity in your messaging, it's going to be bad messaging regardless, right? It, it, now, if you're saying no, I I believe that all drugs should be completely decriminalized because you have a basic human right to decide what you put in your own body and the drug war doesn't work. You can do the same messaging without the macho flash element of it. And in his debauchery and his enthusiasm for drugs and for prostitutes and for partying and, and, and guns, all these great things that John McAfee indulges in, uh, yeah, I would critique his messaging and saying that there is an element of a libertarian macho flash to that. Uh, but hey, it's worked. To get him a much bigger following, you see his mixology videos on Twitter. Like, if you're not following John McAfee on Twitter, and, and you, you you go to Twitter for entertainment, follow official McAfee uh, on Twitter, please. And uh, yeah, check out his his weekly mixology videos. They're a lot of fun. It's working for him. So is is his debaucheriousness, you know, something to critique him for? Eh, a little bit stylistically, maybe uh, egotistical. Heck, if I had accomplished what John McAfee has accomplished, I might be a little more egotistical too. Now, egotistical. This is such a. Uh, I don't. I don't like this word. I'll tell you why. I don't like it because it's conflating healthy ideas with unhealthy ideas. You should have a healthy ego. You should be confident in yourself. When you run into people who have unhealthy egos, they should look at you with your healthy ego and say, man, that guy's egotistical. If not, you're probably not living up to your full potential just based on believing in yourself. Believe in yourself. You should believe in yourself so much that people who don't believe in themselves are jealous, that they critique you for it and they you know, throw you know, petty slander terms like, oh, he's a sociopath, he's, a, he's an egotist, he's, he's so vain and rotten. Fuck them, fuck those haters. No, seriously, fuck him. No, no, does he see me like if you're now so so noble Phoenix? If if you want to critique someone for the legitimate things that you might critique them for with this bad word and say egotistical, arrogant is actually a better word. Someone is arrogant, right? Where where, where they are not just confident in themselves and knowing their worth, but they communicate in a way that that lords it over other people. I feel like I need in in order to stand by my statement here. I have I have to like. I have to do a search for the word arrogant definition. So by Merriam Webster, exaggerated or disposed to exaggerate one's own worth or importance often by an overbearing manner. So if you're if you're promoting yourself in a way that's overbearing, where you're you're and, and to me that means like you know, it's bearing over others, like you know, looking down or demeaning. And when you're exaggerating, there is an element of dishonesty. Definition two, showing an offensive attitude of superiority proceeding from or characterized by arrogance. And I would say this is where John McAfee is clearly on the righteous side of this. Is he is he overbearing? No, he's extremely humble in, in the way that he communicates. Uh, might he exaggerate his own worth or importance? I don't think so. I think he's, if, if anything, you know, he, he's relatively humble in that. I, I don't see it in the debates that I've gotten to do with him in the interview. I, I don't hear him brag as much as as, uh, as as I think he should about himself. Is he exaggerating his worth or importance? Certainly not in an arrogant or overbearing manner. So egotistical? No. Nah, bullshit. Greedy? No. No, absolutely not. Is, is John McAfee greedy? Look at how much money he had. Look at how much time and energy he spent on his activism, spreading the message of libertarianism. No. He has been successful in making money. He he had at, at a time, I think, tens of millions of dollars at his, you know, at, at the point he sold out uh, McAfee. What was it? Hundreds of a couple hundred million. So I mean, it was huge. Was it because he was greedy? No, it's because he created an amazing antivirus company that at the time was revolutionary. And if anything, his behavior since then has shown that he is anything but greedy. So that's my final word on my friend. And, and, and colleague, and a man I have great admiration for, John McAfee. And while I recognize that if Amash got into the race, he might be a stronger running mate for me personally. And while I would be happy 
to be a running mate for, even if it was Amash, or uh, any of the other candidates who I've, I've, I've shared a stage with over the course of this uh, Libertarian primary campaign season, I stand by my endorsement of John McAfee for vice president for the Libertarian Party. I leave it to the delegates to decide at this convention whether or not him campaigning remotely or coming home in civil disobedience would be the best strategy for the Libertarian Party. I hope that he gets the debate tokens to be in the vice presidential debate right now. If you're a delegate, you've got an email sitting in your inbox. They are taking these debate tokens. I implore you, please give your debate tokens to John McAfee. It's going to be a lot of fun seeing him in the VP debate.